Good day, guys and girls. Are you interested in installing a shelf to make it easier for your pets to look outside? Perhaps you've got a pet that is getting up in age and has some issues sitting up in a current windowsill. Maybe you're in an apartment or a renter and you need something that's not permanent that can easily be removed in case you move out. Well, stick around. This is the video for you. We're gonna show you how it's done. So stick around. So as you can see today we've got a helper, this is Atticus, and he's the reason for the installation of this kitty or cat shelf or ledge. He's 17 years old, his mobility is not the best right now, and yeah, this is literally the whole reason that we're installing this. And if you're interested in this video, maybe you'd like to see how we built this set of cat stairs or kitty stairs, then say down in the comments and Atticus and I will try to do our best to make a video about that. So to start with, we want to grab a measurement of the window that we want to install the kitty shelf on or cat shelf on. Don't make fun of me. I am mean, going to refer to it as a kitty shelf or kitty ledge or something like that. So we're just going to simply grab our measurement Try not to get too much in frame. In our case, we're just shy of 58 inches. So that's where we're gonna do our cutting downstairs at 58 inches. All right, guys and girls. So we took that 58 inch measurement, just a little bit shy of 58. We went down here, we cut everything on the miter saw. Now I just put the 45s on the corner so that it didn't catch on anything and it just, to me anyways, gave it a little bit of an aesthetic look. You could do a rounded corner. You could just leave it straight depending on your situation. I just wanted to show you or tell you about a couple of options. Now, the material that I'm using is pre-primed. It's MDF, medium density fiberboard. It's basically just a bunch of wood chips and glue. The nice thing about MDF is it's super straight. It's super stable. Humidity doesn't bother it too much. Moisture does. You get it wet. Um, it doesn't like that too much if it's unprotected. But it's very, very stable, very, very strong, very, very straight. So I think it's perfect for this situation. Now, what I was using was actually just some offcuts from my lumber yard. So this is 5 eighths by 7 and a quarter. So 5 eighths thick, 7 and a quarter, which I think is the perfect dimension for a kitty rump without being too wide. Now this was off a 12 foot piece, but like I said, these were off cuts. So my local lumber yard was actually clearing them out five pack for five bucks. So I got very lucky. Uh, hopefully you guys and girls can get lucky finding something like that too. If not, there's all kinds of options out there. There's finger jointed pine, there's pine, there's MDF, there's varying thicknesses, lengths. I would strongly suggest getting the prime version because it'll just save you a little bit of prep later on now as you can see too what i've done is i've actually routed these edges so that they're nice and smooth rounded kind of gives it a better look you guys and girls don't have to do that you might not have a router table set up like i do but you can take a sanding block and actually route everything or round everything over you can also take a sander, change out the pad, use an aggressive pad to start, then work your way to a, a lighter pad, like a 220 grit, and it will actually give you that same effect. Just, I have the ability, so that's what I did, but it's not a deal breaker. It's not a game changer that it has a rounded edge on it. I just wanted to show you guys and girls another option. Now, I realize some of you guys and girls are not gonna have the setup that I have with a miter saw in order to cut these kinds of angles. You might not have a jigsaw if you're trying to do a round cut, etc. Talk to your lumber yard. A lot of times they will do cuts. Sometimes they won't do angle cuts like that, but it's worth having that conversation. Alternatively, you can always go with a miter box. So it's literally a box that you slide your material into and you make that angle cut. You can even take a saw and set up a little jig yourself and actually make that cut 
on that angle. Just have to be very, very gentle, go very, very slow. Miter box like this one does have limited capacity though for width, but something like this costs about 20 to $30. And trust me, you'll use it on a lot of projects. A lot of trim carpenters actually still swear by these. So just gives you another option. You don't have to have a full professional setup if that's what you want to call this. To some people, it probably looks professional. To me, it doesn't. <laughs> it looks pretty janky sometimes. But uh, there's lots of options out there. You can talk to a neighbor. You can talk to a friend. You know, you can just do a straight cut too. It's just a matter of preference. Just wanted to give you guys and girls another option. So as you can see here on the top, what I've done is I've done some countersinking. So I just used a countersink bit. But again, you don't need this. All you do is drill a hole the size of the shaft of the fastener that you're putting in. And then you take a larger bit for the size of the head. And you can actually do a countersink that way. This is just the method that I'm going with. Because again, I want this to be somewhat removable. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to try to cap these after just to hide the fastener. But it's very simple. Countersink bit. They're actually very cheap and you'll use them on a lot of projects. Just basically do that, measure out. I put these at one inch and then I did the exact quarter measurements for the rest of them. Very simple. Again, it allows you to remove this after. If you're in an apartment uh, rental situation too, you're gonna be moving soon, whatever the case might be. This just gives you some more flexibility. All right, guys and girls. So one step that we're going to do before we actually install this shelf is we're going to kind of stiffen up this little piece of trim here or extension. Just make sure that everything is nice and solid and tied back to the framing around this window because there's going to be a lot of weight once we have that shelf installed on here. It could tip. So there's a half inch of drywall on here. So it doesn't give us a lot of room on this piece. This piece is about an inch to begin with. So at the max, we're, we're sitting about half inch onto the framing. So I'm gonna angle my drill bit a little bit further back in to try to catch something. And I'm just simply using a countersink bit. You don't have to use this. You can use a normal size drill bit and then take a bigger bit that's the size of the head of the screw and you can basically drill that out so that this will sink underneath. So once that's drilled, we're going to follow that up. This is a two inch deck screw. You can use a two inch flooring screw. You could even use a two inch drywall screw, just something to physically fasten this down into the framing. Cause likely right now, all that's in there is just a bunch of finish nails and finish nails are not going to be, really structural in any kind of way. So this just ensures that everything's going to be fastened correctly and give it a little bit of extra support. Now this step might be optional too. I'll let you guys and girls make your own judgment on that, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill all these holes in. I've done about five holes across here, one at the ends, one at the middle, one in the midpoints of that, but I'm going to cover it up. This is just some dry decks spackling compound uh it's basically we call it drywall mud that dries really quick put a little bit on my putty knife go at it from different directions work out any air bubbles and we'll let that dry what this is going to allow is the shelf that i'm designing is kind of temporary it can be permanent but at least this way, say you're moving, the new owners, they're not going to have cats. Say you want to do this on every single window in the entire house. It allows you to actually remove it with a minimal amount of destruction. You're not going to notice the holes from this and the holes that that shelf is going to create are very minimal. So it's very easy to put it back to normal. If you're in an apartment, you're in a rented house, whatever it might be. It's just another option to kind of make things easily returnable to they were before you moved in. Just a thought. All right, guys and girls, so we're ready to mock up the shelf right now and get ready to put some brackets in and measure for them. So we're going to throw this in. What I'm simply doing is taking a small, small bit, just smaller than the shaft of the screw that we're using. Huh? We're going to drill. And if I had enough hands, I'd be able to 
do this a little easier. So that screw is just going to hold it in place for now. We're going to do the same at the ends. Without getting in frame. We're actually going to... install everything. So now basically it's sitting here. We're ready to mock up the supports. So now we're ready to measure for the supports. And this is basically what the support is going to look like. It's just a piece of one by two. And it's simply going to go and install like this. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. Honestly, you can just do trial and error. You can literally take your tape measure, throw it in there, try to get the right 45 degree angle. And it might take you three or four times or more to get that length to the right length. But what I like to do is take a 45 degree speed square. You throw it in here, you can use the square as a guide. And in our case, we're looking at eight and a half, maybe just a little bit more than eight and a half. And that just helps you to get that number more correct the first time. The number that I was getting was actually eight and five eighths. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna cut three of these downstairs at the miter saw. So we're getting ready to cut the rest of the supports. And you'll definitely need this if you've got a chonky cat. Ours is about 12 pounds, but regardless, we wanna make sure there's some support. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut two more of these, three total on our miter saw. Now, some of you guys and girls out there might not have a miter saw. You can actually have the lumber yard do the cuts for you. Alternatively, get yourself a miter box. These things are super cheap, probably about $20, $30. You're gonna use it on other projects if you don't have something like this. Very, very simple. Just gotta put in a little bit of elbow grease it'll give you the exact same results. In fact, some carpenters swear by miter boxes still to this day. So safety first, make sure you got your glasses on. Again, I'm not gonna show you the whole process of cutting because this might not apply to everybody. We're gonna set it at 45. Line up our cut. Remove that piece, flip it around. 45 again you can flip the pieces over but it's easier to mark on this side for the little bit it takes to readjust your saw it's not a big deal in my opinion and just like that we've got another so again this is uh one by two you can see that it's got this little bit of detail on it. Again, it was my lumber yard. They were clearing out a bunch of stuff. There was five pieces. These were eight foot long. They were five bucks. Again, I like that little detail on there. I think it looks pretty good. If you didn't, you could just flip it around. But uh, yeah, reuse, reduce, recycle, all that kind of stuff, upcycle stuff. But if you want to go all out, your lumber yard's going to have all different kinds of options for you. Okay, guys and girls, so you saw that we cut all the angle brackets. Now, what I've done is I've taken my pocket hole jig and I've actually made these pocket holes. So what that allows us to do is when we install it like this, you've got that screw that's going up into here and it's actually going to be hidden, especially from when you're coming in the room and you're looking at these brackets, all you're going to basically see is this side. So you don't have to use pocket hole jigs. You could actually just take this, throw some finish nails into it, throw some screws, do some countersink screws into here, put some plugs on it. There's a couple of different options that you can use. I just have the ability with this pocket hole jig to do that. I really like them. I think that it makes for a very, very strong fastener and joint. It's roughly about $50 for this kit. I promise you, if you're getting into stuff like this, or possibly you've already been into a little bit of woodworking, a little bit of DIY stuff, you're going to use this again. I use this multiple times a year. And after the first time, I think that it's paid for itself. 
That's my opinion, not sponsored by Craig at all. Craig is the one who makes the pocket hole jig. So anyways, this is just the option that I went with. And what this is gonna allow me to do is just have one fastener that goes into the wall and that's it. I just have to put a plug in the wall. Very, very simple to pull out and fix if I have to. Okay, guys and girls, so we're one step closer. Now we're ready to paint this up. Now, if you bought something that was fully primed, ready to go, you could just install it that way. If you haven't made any cuts or anything, but as you can see, we've got these raw edges that we need to protect. I took a sander. This one has 220 grit on it. Just nice fine grit to get any of that roughness down. We're probably gonna have to sand between coats too, especially on this raw edge here being MDF. It tends to kinda, I don't know, it feels kind of rough, fuzzy, is the best description I can give it. You don't need a sander. You can use a block like this one. You can use a piece of sandpaper. Very, very simple, get that prep done. Now, all we're using is a semi-gloss paint. Semi-gloss will hold up a little bit better than a flat paint. Gloss paint tends to hold up very well, but it shows a lot of brush strokes and errors and it's kind of shiny. So I don't personally prefer gloss. Gloss will hold up better though, I will say that. You can literally just take a paintbrush and brush everything on, but I would suggest getting a small roller. You're gonna be able to actually roll all these edges too. Very versatile. You don't have to get an expensive one. You could even go to the dollar store, pick one of these up. You can use a regular cover like this one, or you can get a foam roller. Both will do the exact same thing, and it will just speed up your time immensely and do a nice even coat the first time. So I'm not gonna bore you guys and girls with painting. I don't think you wanna watch paint dry. We're gonna paint this up. I'm gonna do at least two coats on this rough edge, possibly even three. We're even gonna coat the underside, which in the case of this wood is not protected, probably not going to see it ever, but I'm going to protect it anyways. That way, moisture, humidity, stuff like that's not going to kind of mess with it. So we'll see you when we're ready to install. All right, guys and girls, so we're ready to install the freshly painted cat shelf. It's still a little bit tacky. Probably could have used another, uh, maybe even another 12 hours to dry. Fortunately, it's humid as all get out here and you know, that's just not feasible right now So we're gonna just take our time We're gonna be extra careful and we're going to install this so I'm gonna try to do this without getting too much in frame But you get the idea Lay the shelf in Take your screw of choice So if you remember, the piece of trim that we're screwing into is also screwed into the framing below. So these screws do not need to be any longer than the material that we're going into, which is 5 eighths. So if you use a good inch and a quarter, even inch and a half screw, that's gonna be fine. If you go any longer than that, you're probably just gonna blow right through that trim. You could crack it and you're probably just going into drywall or the space between the drywall and the framing. So there's really no need to use any fastener longer than that. We've made this plenty strong and uh, it's not going anywhere, especially once we add the brackets. As you can see, Atticus is being a good supervisor today. But I wanted to give you guys and girls some more options. So yes, I created my own brackets myself with material that I had bought quite cheaply. This stuff is available everywhere. But you can actually find pre-made brackets like this one that's already pre-painted. You could use this is for handrails right bracket screws into the wall support the shelf this is the hardware here this is something that i had salvaged you keep it you never know they sell brackets like this and bigger too this would work they even have brackets like this now yes these are small but they make them in all different kinds of sizes so i just wanted to give you guys and girls a different option if your skills are not where some other people's skills are, or if you want something that's just very simple that you don't have to make yourself, you can go out and buy the brackets, create the shelf yourself. Your, the shelf yourself, 
That's a new one. Just want to give you guys and girls all kinds of options, but honestly, you're more capable than you know. I would give this a try, especially if you're creating the shelf yourself. Give this a try. So the next thing we're going to do, boys and girls, is we're going to install the brackets. And this might be different with your option, but with mine, obviously we're going with these brackets. I've marked out a spot underneath where I want these to go. And I'm trying to do this without getting into frame. <laughs> Proving to be a little bit difficult. No deformation on the top. You use the right side screws in the case of this. It's 5 8 material into 5 8 material. So we're using one inch pocket hole screws. And it really is quite simple. Everything is nice and hidden. I really like them. Again, I'm not sponsored by Craig, the pocket hole people. This one's going to be hard. I'm trying to stay out of frame here. But I think we got it. So you get the idea. We're going to go on to the last one, get that one fastened. We'll see you back here. So now that we have the brackets installed where we want them, we got to mark where that hole here is actually going to go into the drywall. We're hoping, obviously, that it's going to hit a stud, but all we did was lay it out for center and correct spacing for equal spacing. So you could go in, you could measure, you could do all that kind of stuff. Honestly, the easiest thing, take a screw. It's going to get right in the way of the camera. I realize that. But if you, if you do this, it's going to mark exactly... Where that screw needs to be and where that anchor needs to be more importantly so i can tell on all three of those holes we didn't hit anything but again we're just trying to keep everything equal spacing nice looking not necessarily hitting anything structural that's what the anchors are going to do so when it comes to anchors i really prefer these ones they're called wall drillers and as you can see they're metal they're quite strong they're self-drilling you don't need to actually go in and drill the hole first. It'll just do it itself. It's like a one and done. This is the size we're going to be using, a little bit smaller. And as you can see, it holds up to 52 pounds each. And that probably pull away. And that's not even the shear value. So again, that's what we're dealing with here is shear value because the bracket wants to pull down the wall. So we're going to use these. Now, if you've gotten any of these for free in some of your past projects they will work too it's all kinds of different anchors and i like to keep them just in case because they do have their purpose but for something like this i'm going to prefer to go with something that i know has the structural rigidity and the support that we're going to need I'm not sponsored by them but i use them all the time so we already know where our holes are because we've already pre-drilled everything so it's really as simple as taking the wall driller or the anchor you can use a phillips you can use a robertson head line everything up try not to get in the frame it's that simple it's going to be exactly exactly where we need it to be okay so now we're ready to actually reinstall these brackets and put them back into their support so i put the brackets back on because we measured everything once we don't have to cut twice i know that doesn't totally apply here but <laughs> that shelf isn't going anywhere we fastened everything back into place. We put in the five screws that we had marked along the top. Now I was looking for some white headed screws and all I had was these ones with kind of the built-in washer on them. It's just not going to work at least for what I'm trying to do, but that is an option for you guys and girls. You can also buy wood plugs like this. You just need to countersink your hole a little bit deeper. See how it's kind of a mushroom shape and you put that in. The problem with this is that it sits flush on the actual shelf so it's not the look we're going for 
but we're gonna show you another option. All right, guys and girls, so with the shelf installed, we're ready just for a couple of finishing touches. Now, as you can see, I've painted the exposed screws, which is very, very simple. Again, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Perhaps you're in an apartment building, a rental unit, you don't wanna damage it too much. So this is super simple, you can take it apart. Alternatively, you could use some spackle, wood filler, drywall mud, and actually just go in there and fill those holes up. That way everything looks cohesive, you don't see the screws, and it's a more finished product. I would use that more if you were in a permanent situation, you own the house, you knew that you were always gonna have cats, you're not going anywhere for a while, that might be a good option for you. But another option are these little screw caps. These can be bought at any home improvement store, big box store, they just call it a screw cover. These ones are actually almond color. They're pretty close to white actually. They come in brown, they come in black, they do come in white, just didn't have white in stock when I was there for some reason, probably because it's so popular, but they literally just, boom, push into place, gives you that nice finished look, and you're able to pop that cap off after and take things apart if you don't like it, if you're moving, whatever the situation might be. So for the installation I showed you, we use these pocket holes, which I really enjoy. I think they're a nice, slick, and really, really strong fastening method. It saves you from having to kind of nail this way or screw through that way, and it hides the fasteners. And a neat thing that Craig does, and there's also other brands out there, I'm not promoting Craig, I'm not associated with them, sponsored by them, is they sell these little plugs right here that actually go into this and cover everything up. The nice thing about these is if you were using stained wood that you can actually get these in oak, pine, all kinds of different materials. You can stain them up or in our case, you can paint them up. And honestly, I'm not too concerned. The only person that's going to see this honestly is my wife and I, and I want to be able to quickly remove this if we decide to move. Maybe the next uh, people that live here, they don't want a cat shelf. Or again, like I said before, you're in an apartment, you're in a rental unit, and you don't want to make this a permanent thing and make a lot of damage. But if you're concerned with these holes, that's where these come in. I've pre-painted it. Now, I'm not actually going to install these because I want to be able to take this shelf out because I don't think the next people who buy this house are going to appreciate a cat shelf, but I'm going to give them the option. But that's how basically you install these. They're meant to go in with glue, so the glue actually helps kind of lubricate them and go in. These will actually be a little bit bigger than the hole is. It's meant to be cut off and sanded at a later point, but again, it just finishes up everything it conceals it a little bit better. Again, I'm not concerned with having it look like this. I don't know if you guys and girls agree, but I'm the only one that's going to see it. If we got a guest over here sleeping in the spare bedroom, they're going to notice it. Who cares? But just wanted to provide you guys and girls with another option if you wanted to go the full way. You could even take spackle, drywall mud, wood filler, and fill those holes if you wanted to. And that's a perfectly good option too. Again, just trying to give as many options to the people out there and make it as simple as possible. And this is as simple as I think I could make it. So trying to get a cat to do something that you want them to do, especially on camera for the sake of YouTube is a little difficult. <laughs> and our boy Atticus, he's 17 years old 
and I was really hoping to show you how he comes up on his kitty stairs down here, comes across and actually jumps up onto the side table here and then jumps up into the window and looks outside. Now, having it be a cold, rainy day like it is today, that doesn't help either, but I really just wanted to demonstrate how much the cat actually enjoys sitting in the window now. He actually used to get up just on that little windowsill ledge, that four inches there, he'd wedge himself against the window screen and now he's got this whole shelf to sit on and it's more important at this age now at 17 because he's just not as limber and as mobile as what he used to be. He could jump easily eight feet. Now he can barely jump up onto a bed, hence the uh, kitty stairs, but Anyways, I did my best to try to show how much Atticus actually enjoys his kitty shelf. So I really hope that you guys and girls enjoyed this video. I hope that I gave you some inspiration and showed you that really it's not as difficult as what it might seem. Really anybody, and I mean anybody, is capable of this. You can have most of the work done for you at the lumber yard. They can do a lot of the cuts. Yeah, you might need a special tool here and there that you don't have, but once you have these tools, you're gonna use them for all kinds of projects. I firmly believe that anything is possible once you have proper knowledge, the guidance, and the inspiration and just somebody telling you that you can do it. If you're interested in more kitty videos, we have that kitty stare that we showed you earlier. If you're interested in that, there will be a video coming up on that. Very simple to do. Help your cats get up and down from the bed without hurting themselves, especially in their old age. If you're looking for yard maintenance, house maintenance, vehicle maintenance tips, and tricks, this is the place for you. Yeah, you're not gonna have super flashy production values and cutaways and all kinds of stuff, but you're gonna get a couple jokes here and there. You're gonna get a lot of good information. It's just the perfect place for the common homeowner, property owner to be is right here. If you're new to this channel, please like and subscribe. Subscribing costs you absolutely nothing, but subscribing helps me a huge amount as a creator. It allows me to buy better equipment and make better videos, better content for you. Again, costs you nothing. All you do is you hit that button to subscribe and you'll get notifications that I've posted a new video. It's that simple. And remember, you never know unless you bear. We'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.